DJ Sly, D, DJ Sly, hey, 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 DJ Sly, D, DJ. What's up, bro? What's up, famo? How you feeling, man? Man, I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling blessed. I can't complain, man. How you feeling? Man, I'm good, man. I definitely want to thank you for taking the time out your schedule today to get on with us, man. We definitely appreciate that. Nah, man. Like, I appreciate I appreciate y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the platform. No doubt. No doubt, man. You ready to go ahead and get it popping? I know you got a yeah, lot more. I know you got a lot more interviews <laughs> lined up for today. Yeah, I've been banging, I, yeah, I've been banging them all, I've been banging them all day. So. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. You know, you're connecting with different audiences. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been behind the scenes for a little bit. So, you know, um, coming back out as an, as an artist in the forefront, you know, it's very important when you have an agenda and a message to get across. You know what I'm saying? You want to take things to the next level. So, you know, I'm coming back out here. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just, just trying to, you know, put out some good music and um, send a positive message, you know? All right. All right. No doubt. We're going to talk all about that. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and get this thing started. We got to give yep. some love to our sponsors, Bel Air. I need Bel Air. There to head to your favorite liquor store, grab your favorite bottle of Bel Air that you like, and always make sure that you drink responsibly. Very important. Um, on top of that, I need everybody right now to cruise on over and follow at myjet.com. That's M Y J. E T D O C. It's a virtual age urgent care app connecting users with licensed medical professionals instantly, no waiting room, no insurance, and you can save up to 85% off of our X. Go see what it's all about right now. It's real official, man. This evening, 2021 combo in full effect, and we are hollering at the win and only <laughs> Omega Red. I'll let you red name grow. Chilling, man. You know, just getting ready to, um for this tour. Got the single that's uh, starting to take, um, starting to get to heat up the radio. Um, do it for the gram. Just blessed to be here, brother. You know what I'm saying? And still doing this, man. <laughs> all right. Before we before we talk about the tour and all that, we always like to have all our guests. We like to go back to their childhood. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that and get get familiar with you to see how things was happening for you as a kid. So go ahead, man, and it don't got to be long. Go ahead and give us a brief um, statement on how things was for you growing up as a child. Um, Man, for, growing up as a child, it was very unique for me. Um, You know, I grew up around a lot of, uh, like, I grew up in, like, in Dorchester and Randolph. So when, so I, I lived in the inner city of Dorchester and then ended up moving to the suburbs. But in Dorchester, back then, they known uh, they know what block you was by parishes. So I was St. Matthew's Parish. So I live around Woodrow Ave, um, and um, Morton Street. Everyone from Boston, they 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 know what I'm talking about. But um, it was rough. You know what I'm saying? Like it was rough growing up in Dorchester, and then going moving to the suburbs. You know, out into like 20 minutes outside of um uh Dorchester and Randolph. You know, it was it was predominantly a Jewish community at that time. You know what I'm saying? So there was a lot of issues with black people moving into the suburbs and stuff like that. So you know, there was times where you know, we were fighting, you know, white dudes, you know what I'm saying, talking about, you know, nigger, get out of our cut, you know, get out of our suburbs, you know. Like uh, you know, we had like race race riots and stuff. It was cr crazy. But um then a lot of Caribbean and, you know, a lot of bl black people start to migrate more and more south, you know, into the suburbs. And um I just I, I just, it was just really diverse, man. I, I just grew up in a really uh diverse, violent <laughs> <laughs> you know, saying, culture. A lot of people thought Boston was just like just all white people. It's like, nah, man, it's everything. Caribbean, Cape Verdeans, Haitians, Asians, Filipino. So I grew up around all that. You know, Irish, Italian. You know, I grew up around everything. You know what I'm saying? So grew up really diverse, and the music was very diverse too. You know what I'm saying? And I grew up playing the saxophone, so I'm actually a musician. So, you know, um, you know, growing up, I got into a lot of fights. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as I got older, you know what I'm saying? Um, I learned how to box. So I was just knocking dudes out pretty much after that. So it wasn't really no fighting after that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I had a pretty decent childhood, though. I can't complain. You know what I'm saying? Like, my childhood definitely molded who I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's good. What was some of the music being played in the household as you was growing up as a kid? Whoa, man. Shoot, man. Um, so 
I grew up a little listening to a lot of um like old school Motown, um, disco, uh, classic rock. My mom was a um, big Jimi Hendrix fan, so I listened to a lot of that. My dad, like Sam Cooke, you know, the Four Tops, Betty White, you know, I listened to all that stuff. So I, you know, I was born in 76, so I got to catch like hip hop when it was starting to bubble, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I was there for the inception of it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I listened to pretty much everything, but yeah. And then my aunt, like I used to go upstairs in my aunt's spot and she was into cameo. She, she was into the funk, you know what I'm saying? So I call it a funk, funk. from her, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, um, man, I, I just been, yo, man, I've been blessed, man, to just be around all that type of different uh, musical opus, you know, I would say, you know what I'm saying? Like it's very broad. So I, I, I fuse every, I fuse everything with hip hop pretty much. That's dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. How did you yeah. come up with your name? All right, so Red's my nickname, you know what I'm saying? I'm Scottish, Native American, Indian, and African American. So when, when I was born, I was like, had white, I was like, I was like really white with fiery red hair. So even my, oh, even my, shit. yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like there was my, like, they were questioning, like family members were questioning, was I, was I really my pops' son? Because my pops is, my pops from the South, you know what I'm saying? So he, 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 he's really black. So I came out with white, you know, with freckles and fiery hair. They were like, oh, man, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I look after my mother's side more because most of some, a lot of people, they say I look like one of my uncles on my uh, mother's side or one of my great uncles. But, um, but that's where I got my nickname Red from. And then, um, you know, I, I got locked up for three and a half years. So, you know, when I was, um, when I was down, I was uh, just lifting weights and um, the OGs started calling me Omega. So I was like, let me go look this up. Like, you see what this Omega thing is. You know, I like I, I like the, the the Omega Red. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I didn't and I didn't realize though it was an X Men X Men book character at the time either. I didn't re I didn't realize that he was a villain in X Men um in X Men. But when I looked it up in the dictionary, it said uh something big was coming, and I knew it was the last letter of the Greek alphabet. But it said something big was also coming. So I was like, yeah, when I get out of jail, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how I reinvented myself. I, I used to call myself Eulogy. You know, my first rap name was Eulogy because I'm like, when I'm writing these bars, I'm murdering. I'm, you know, saying I'm writing this Eulogy. You know, yeah. so uh, I reinvented myself while I was in jail, and I came out as Omega Red. Man, so you was in jail. You had to go do a bid. Yeah, I went and did three and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, man. That's 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 that. Doing a three and a half year bid that will give you a lot of time to sit down <laughs> and think about a lot of things. Yeah, Can you tell fact. us about some of the things that was going through your mind while you did your bid. Yeah, like I was watching dudes come in and out, you know, like just circling back in. I'm like, yo, what are y'all doing? Like, I, I was like, I, I don't want to come back here, man. I, you know, I had cats coming back every six months. You know, Damn. and I, yeah, and I was just like, what are y'all doing, man? I don't want to come back here. Like, I'm, I got to sit down for three and a half. Um, so I did a lot of self-reflection. And then um, I just I just started writing and reading. Like, I wrote over 350 songs while I was there. And then. Um, 350? I, yeah. Woo! I, pretty, I, pretty, I pretty much, I pretty much wrote one to two, three songs a day. Yeah. Man, you were using your time wisely, I see. Yeah, I was doing that, and then I was reading a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, my mom was uh, sending me the Donald Goins joints. You know the Don Donald Goins? Like, uh, um, I don't know if you know who Donald Goins is, but he was a uh, famous street author, and he wrote, like, um, um, uh, Whore Son, um, uh, Never Die Alone. They did made a movie out of DMX. DMX was in that movie, Never Die Alone. So that's yeah, a song, that, yeah, that, that, you know, so that's a Donald Goins novel. So I, I, read, I was reading a lot of Donald Goins, and, just like just reading a lot of the sources and stuff like that. My man, when I was in the military, my man um grew up with Wu Tang, so he he's like, yo, you gotta read the thesaurus, you gotta read all this. So I started like really reading the dictionary and and mastering my wordplay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, that's one thing that I don't know if artists today do that, but a lot of artists from back in the day, you would actually go into the studio and you would see a thesaurus in that book. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. And it tripped me out. Like, when I first seen it, I had to ask her, I'm like, why you got a thesaurus in here? Oh, because I, like <laughs> I like to flip my words and stuff. So I go to the thesaurus and see what, you know, uh, relates to what I got in my raps. I was like, yeah, yeah. oh, wow, okay, that's how they do this. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. So yeah. I, that, that was very shocking to me, man. Wow. Um, where does your inspiration come from when it comes to doing music? Man, I just, I don't know, man. I just love music. So, I mean, traveling, 
um, watching movies. Um, I mean, I grab inspiration from any of my life experiences. Like, I write about a lot about my life experiences or experiences that I know that I have with somebody. Um, so, and, uh, you know, I just get inspiration from everybody. I, I love to collaborate because other artists will inspire me too. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah. That's why I just get my experience from life and life experiences, you know? Yeah. What are you currently listening to right now? Um, right now I'm currently listening to, I just did a song with Ponzo Houdini. Actually, I'm listening to a few things. I did a record with Sila. Um, it's called Crown. It's fire. Um, I've been, I had that on replay for like a whole day. I just did a song with Ponzo Houdini and Dirty O, um, called Get Lit. I'm actually singing on the hooks. I'm a singer too. So I'm singing on that hook with, with them on it. I've been, that's been on repeat all day. So I just been listening to a lot of the stuff that I've been doing recently with my collaborations. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of support would you say that you get from your hometown? Um, it's it's fifty fifty. You know what I'm saying. I, yeah. Some people love me. Some people hate me. But it's not. But it's not. I don't think the hate comes from like generally hating me. I think it's just because you know some people just don't get out their own way. They see I came. I grew up where they grew up and came where they came from. And I don't know, level of success is how you see it. You know what I'm saying? They may think I'm at a level of success, but I'm like, I'm still trying to get to a, a level of success. So it's really about perception. Um, but, you know, I got no beef with nobody, but usually people have issue. Um, some people just have issues because of, you know, just I guess where they feel they're at in their, in their career at that time. But, you know, I've always tried to collaborate with everybody from my hometown. So if, 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 I, if you ain't rocking with me, it's because you, you got an issue, not me. Okay, I, I like that. I like that. What makes you stand out and very different from all the other artists that has came into this industry? Um, what makes me stand out, I feel, is because um, I'm a I'm a musician, and I have uh I have um multi genres of music, and I haven't seen I haven't really seen too many uh, artists do what I've been doing. I've been playing with a lot of bands way before other people were playing with live bands. And I think that's what differentiates me, that I, I'm actually a triple threat, you know? I, you know, I've been in movies, I act, I'm a musician, and I can rap, and I'm a producer. So, I, I encompass, yeah. You, can make, so, you make beats? Yeah, I make beats too. Oh, shit, what? Okay, yeah. okay. And, nah. I got, and I do a lot of TV publishing. I got over 3,000 placements on TV and film. I did the theme song to Black Lightning on the first season, so. I know how to make cinematic oh, my, music. Oh, but... my, my, my dog into that sync licensing, yeah. Yeah, you already know. He into that sync licensing. He's smart. You know. He ain't yeah. bullshit at all, boy. <laughs> yeah. See, a lot of people don't know about that side of the game, bro. You don't know about that side of the game. Wow. That, that's what, yo, 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 that's why I be chilling, man. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm getting them royalty checks. So I'm like, well, yeah. I, once you get that money, man, you don't, you don't care, man. You don't need the clout chase. You don't need, you, you don't need to do all that. I had to learn that. I had to learn that, too. I started going to the ASCAP conventions, and I linked up with my homies on uh, Beat Clock. You know what I'm saying? I did a co-publishing deal. You know what I'm saying? And I was, on the, I was off to the races. You know what I'm saying? Then I started getting really big placements. So, you know. Yeah, I got, I got, not, I, got, I, got I, I got to holler at you. I'm trying to get into that seat space. <laughs> hey, listen, get get at me. Get at me. A lot of money. Um, get it's at a lot me. of money um, to be made in that space. And a lot of artists, man, I'm, I be trying to tell them, man, they be waiting. They be like, they come back to me two years later and be like, yo, where, what's up with that, you know, publishing deal? And I'm like, yo, you wasted mad time, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it takes a good seven, eight months to really get, you know, get, get in there. You know what I'm saying? You wasted two years now. You know what I'm saying? But. I just try to educate, man, because I wasn't educated when I was younger, and I, I'm trying to pass down that, that knowledge down. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's 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 lovely, man. That mm -hmm. you know, because we got so many people that come into this game, and they want to be gatekeepers, and they don't want to share the info or teach the next up and coming. So, man, that's that's dope that you do that. You know what I'm yep. saying? More people like you to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, man, and and I try to tell artists too. You know what I'm saying? Like. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, like, I want to have recognition and, I, and, you know what I'm saying, I want success, but I'm not going to have success with the cost of my my soul, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Like I already been there. I seen what it is. Like I already, I already been to the top of the pyramid. Man. I, see, I see what it is. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like you yeah, already know about the game, game, game. Yeah. So it's just like I'm okay. I could be right in the middle. Make my, you know, I make a little bit under a million. I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? I got other things going on. I got other business ventures going on. You know what I'm saying? I created other multiple revenue streams. So you know, um, I just feel like every artist needs to do that now. They have to have a business, but on top of what they got going on in the music business, you know what I'm saying? True, true, true. What is your biggest goal that you're trying to get out of the music industry? I'm trying to pass down legacy. Um, I, I want to be able to pass down my catalog to my my daughters, kids. You know what I'm saying? Grandkids, grandkids, grandkids. I'm, I want to pass legacy. You know what I'm saying? And I wanna, I wanna. Um, I want timeless my music to be timeless and classic where people can play it 30, 40, 50 years from now. Yeah. And that's that's one thing that we don't have in music today that I noticed. We don't have a lot of timeless music. You know what I'm saying? These records they turn and they turn over so quick. Yeah, Especially, they turn and burn. <laughs> yeah, they turn and burn. And it's like ten years from now, man, we're not gonna like how our, our parents, they bumping all that stuff that they grew up Right, to. right because it was timeless music but today's generation i don't think that they really gonna have timeless music i mean like you like it depends on the artist because there are some really good artists that or the, there are some good artists though like but they're they're a handful but like what trippy red gonna be rapping at 50. <laughs> like for real you know what i'm saying like no offense to trippy red but like yo like you can't be looking like that at 50 years old my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like so so I definitely get where you're coming from, but there are there are some good young artists out. It's just a you know there's a handful of them, and you got to find them because they're not going to be playing those good artists. They want to push. They have a different agenda of what they're trying to push on radio. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know. Yeah. If you collab with one single artist. Who would that artist be, and why? Well, I've already I've already collaborated with the artists that I want to collaborate with. Um and. Karis One, I, we did a song together called Hip Hop. Um, I collaborated with Ray J as well. I mean, I pretty much anybody who I wanted to collaborate, I, I really collaborated with them. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to collaborate with Karis One because you know he's a teacher, right? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so gotta gotta um, have one with KRS One. It's only yeah, right. So, yeah. So I got that done, and then I worked with a ton of like platinum and Grammy Award winning producers. You know, I just did a record with 88 Keys on my next album. It's called Um. Uh, uh, it's called Home Sweet Home, so I'm pretty excited about that because Eddie Keys, he's he's a crazy that's producer. The, yeah, that's the yeah, goal, yeah, yeah, I got a crazy record with him, and he shot, and he came and shot the video. He was in a video with me, so that's gonna be a good look. Oh man, I can't wait to check that out. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. Does Omega Red have a useless talent? And if you do, what is your most useless talent? Useless talent? Oh man, no. Useless <laughs> talent. Nah, I don't got to use this talent. All my talents are, are go to use. <laughs> okay, okay. But I like to. But I, but I like to cook though. I like to cook, so I, I be catching. I be asking my sisters and my, my my sister and my moms for these recipes. So I like to cook. I'm getting. I'm trying to get nice with the with the my moms and my sisters' recipes. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to keep that legacy going. You know. So I guess you could say that's useless. Because I don't. Okay. I don't cook all the time. But when I do, I put my heart and soul into it. Then I do it be good because you know everybody cooking. Everybody can't cook. So what what's that? Listen, what do they say after they eat your dish? Nah, they rock with it because I show I take pictures. I show they'll know by like they'll know by well my famous but I mastered the mac and cheese in my family. So everyone tells me that's the bomb. I mastered yeah. I mastered that. Yeah. So the mac and cheese I definitely mastered. Okay. Okay. I like that. What does generosity mean to you as an artist? generosity um like like we had a conversation earlier about you know passing down knowledge to young artists helping them guiding them telling them mm -hmm. what they need to have a solid foundation in the music industry collaboration you know what i mean so i mean i'm i like to charge people for collaborations but if i think you're talented and i see you grinding and you putting in the work like you're putting in the work like i put in the work i'm going you know what i'm saying i'm going to try to help you out because you know they as they say um hard work out beats talent yeah so okay. well, so gener to me it, generosity is, is giving information and in, and in, in collaboration because I, a lot of artists need that we all need to help each other a lot of them don't want to but we all need to help each other that's how we all gonna win yeah you, you're right about that sometimes i think that people 
and this is just my opinion, y'all. Sometimes I think that people uh, get get frustrated and they don't want to help people because they may think that when they help this individual, they're going to take off and go further than they did. I know, but what's wrong with that, though? Th that person should be look come back and pick them up. Yeah. Like, if someone put me, like, if someone put me on, I'm coming back and getting them. Come you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the same thing, like, the same thing is you should be help. You should want that person to win because when they win, you win. True, true. I don't know, but that's 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 the way. But I no, see but it. I've been I've been in those situations though where I've seen people skyrocket and they they you know what I'm saying they shit on you. I've seen it, but I, but they continue to do that. What happens? Yeah. What what they say? The people you see going <laughs> up is gonna be the same people you what see going down. Yeah, and I've seen, I've seen that. I, I've seen all that, you know what I mean? And that's what taught me a lesson, to always remain humble. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know. You never know. You never know, that's facts. Is there something that you do today that you wish you had known to do years ago? Yeah. Learned about uh, uh, passive and residual income. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if I knew about that out of high school, I'd be a billionaire by now. Wow. That's you know what I'm saying? Because I, I own my own payment processing company. So that's when I started wait, to wait, 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 I know that's what well actually that's what makes me even more unique the, from the question you made before. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I learned about that because I got royalties. I'm like, I need more rev multiple revenue streams. How can I make more money in my sleep? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I actually did work for a payment. I did work for a lot of payment processing companies until I, I learned the game, and I, then I said, you know what, I can do this on my own. So I went off and I created my own brokerage firm. <laughs> <laughs> So, man, congratulations, bro! Thank you, man. It was, it, it, but it, it was hard work. It wasn't easy, man. Like, it, like, it, like I, like I sacrificed a lot, man. Like, and like the first couple few years, it sucked because I wasn't making no bread. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But you know, I worked at night, at UPS. You know what I'm saying? I stayed on my grind, and then I made enough money to where I could pay all my insurance and all that stuff. And then you know, I was doing the music publishing stuff. And then you know, um, I got to this point where now, now I can do what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's dope. That's dope. Mindset, boy. Your mindset is on a thousand. <laughs> yeah, man. For real, man. Because, you know, I because I love music. I have a passion. I love music. Music is everything to me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do music for, you know, for attention. I do it because I love it in my in the messaging. I love making music. And I love how pe I see how people react on stage when I'm performing and, and hear my message. It's a wonderful thing, man. That's my That's my high. Have you ever said no to an opportunity? Yeah, I just said no to an opportunity about uh, six months ago. They wanted me to do this uh, reality show, some Big Brother thing, and they wanted to, like, they wanted, so you're related to a real famous celebrity, right? So everyone knows my aunt was Donna Summer. So Oh, word. Yeah. So they wanted me to go on there, but no one would know that she was my aunt. They would have to figure it out. Like, but... I don't, I ain't going on no reality shows. I ain't that ain't my thing. You know what I'm saying? That I don't I didn't want to come out come back out in front of the camera on a reality show. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like some big brother game show type thing. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'll pass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe if I was younger, I probably would have done it, but I, I but when you're young and you're hungry, you're trying to get on stuff, you'll say probably yes to pretty much everything. But I'm at this point where I know I, I have knowledge of self, I know who I am, and I say I don't need that to you know what I'm saying, to get me, like, you know, um, a season of exposure. And then everyone puts me in that reality series box. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. Yeah. They, they, some people say that when you get to doing them reality shows, you're on your way to the end. <laughs> 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 or or you know either you don't have a lot of money left, too. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's oh, a good yeah. thing you didn't go that route. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you tell us what your long-term goals are? as being an artist? Um, well, my long-term goal is to the point where um, I want to become successful enough where I can sign a few a few artists um, and really take them to the next level. But 
first, I got to get myself there first. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I can't help anyone else out until I help myself. Right, right, right. That's right. That's and I'm pretty right. much doing. I'm pretty much doing everything that I want to do right now. I mean, I'm pretty much doing it. I'm just gonna just keep doing it until I can't do it anymore, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, yeah, you 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 living life right now, bro. Like, I, hey, I ain't mad at that. You got going on in your life. You you live a life, especially having that processing center for it. <laughs> you, it. Yo, but listen, it has its ups and downs too, man. You know, I've been doing it for over twelve years, but. It, it sucked, man, in the beginning. Like, people think they're going to get in it and get it, flip, flip it, flip some money real quick. That's not how it is, man. You got to build your portfolio up and build your clientele up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot. I've seen a lot of people get into my this game, and they're like, yo, man, this is harder than I thought it was. Or they have a hard time taking rejection. Me coming into me coming into this industry, you know, also being in the music industry, I, take re I took rejection all the time. You know what I'm saying? People saying, no, 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 closing doors. So... I was used to the rejection. So if I had the vision, I see what the potential money I can make because I can make an endless amount of money. It's all about me going out there and selling. You know what I'm saying? So the money I make is, is, is there's, there's no there's no end cap of what type of money I can make. It's all about my hustle. Right, right. Tell us about your pros and cons when it comes to social media. Uh, my pros, I, I just try to be consistent on social media. Just with the mindset and the consistency. Um, cons, I don't know. Some people just be clout chased too much. I'm not really a clout chaser. You yeah. Know? Okay. So, like, I see a lot of people, a lot of numbers on there, but I'm like, well, are you converting those numbers into dollars? How are you, How you know, like, nope. <laughs> yeah, so you right with me. Like, I'm nope. just like, how, like, all right, let's, nope. let's, let's check you out. Let's Bro, check your iTunes sales. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, like, man, everybody faking the funk on these, with these numbers, bro, like, because one thing about it, like, even people around here in the city, I mean, I look at them, I'll be like, man, y'all got 36,000 followers. Jeez. You should be selling something to them every day. You should be a star right about now if you got 36,000 followers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, and then when you go to the page and you look at the likes, the likes don't match up with the following. You got 36,000 followers, but you only get 15 likes on your picture. Well, you know, well, well, sometimes that will happen, but but what I'm saying is, like, a lot of the artists, I'm like, well, I mean, like, all right, you got people following you. Are they truly your fans? Or are you just impress, trying to impress people that don't really support you? Right? <laughs> if you got if you got 36,000 people on Instagram, right, they're following you, you should at least, at least be able to get 1,000 people to come out to see you. Yeah, you should. And that's, yeah, that's, that's the other thing that don't add up. Because now these club right. owners... These club owners are booking people off of IG that got these big numbers. And then when they come in to the venue and they like, just like how you said, it's crickets. But you got 36,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so that's that's my that's my whole thing. So um, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of them getting lazy, too, because of those numbers. They think just because they got those numbers, people are going to come out like, nah, you got to interact. Like I, I interact with I interact with everybody on my page, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm 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 messaging them or I'm 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 keeping communication as much as I possibly can. I can't, you know, keep track of everyone, you know, twenty four seven, but right. you know, it's really about me engaging with these people, you know what I'm saying? So right. I find I find myself um um the more engagement I do personally with people, the better the better um uh people come out, you know what I'm saying, and, and support and support me, you know. Okay, okay. Now let's let's move ahead. You got this tour, man. Tell us about the Rich Lit City tour. What is this tour all about, man? Yo, I mean, my man Ponzo, man. He's, I mean, just you know, he's from Buffalo, New York. Um, that's where I'm living right now. I'm in Buffalo, and I met Ponzo Houdini. I said about six, seven years ago, and um, I just seen his grind. You know, what I'm saying from the beginning to now, and I told him, I said, you gonna make it, Ponzo. You you gonna make it because. He had the same hustle and same grind that I had, you know, and the passion for music. So we've been collaborating and keeping in touch for over the years and, you know, working on music together. And uh, he's like, yo, Red, I'm about to do this tour, man. And, you know, I want to get you up on this tour. And um, I was like, I'm honored, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Pons was that dude right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm just getting back into the game, you know what I'm saying, in front of the stage. So I can't ask for demands because I'm not in demand yet. But going on this tour, you know what I'm saying, I'll, it's going to expose me to a whole a whole new generation and, and um. A uh, whole new set of fans, you know what I'm saying? So I'm appreciative of that, and we're gonna get we're gonna get rich lit, you know what I'm saying? That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, and I see you're actually gonna be in Charlotte, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. 
You coming down south. You coming down the ice. So, so that's where you at? You in Charlotte? I'm in Augusta, so it's like two to three hours. Okay, drive, okay. But you know, okay. it, ain't, it ain't far. You know, Charlotte's still the south. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, my bo both my sisters. I got. I'm actually. I got. I got four sisters left living in Charlotte. Like uh, Columbus. Okay. I got a sister living in Columbus, and I got three sisters in Charlotte. So I'm, I'm out in Charlotte all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So it's like, like you going to your second home. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And I got um, and I got a lot of family in Atlanta. So. Okay. Okay, boy. Yeah, that boy so. got some southern ties out here, man. Yeah, my pop, my, my pops from South Carolina. My pops from the deep south, the red dirt, red clay. You see, I'm see right there. Walt, 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 right, right, he's like 20 minutes outside what? of Walterboro. Walterboro, bro, I live in, <laughs> I live in uh, North Augusta, South Carolina. So Walterboro, right down the road, bro. I, I know, I know where it's at. I know where it's at. <laughs> Yo, but I used to, I used to rock with this other DJ out there. He was a big DJ in the early 2000s. White dude. I can't remember his name though. He was around that. I can't remember his name. But he's still on radio. I just can't remember his name. I used to go to the Mix Show Power Summers back in the day. You remember those, Renee? DJ, is it DJ B Lord? That's it, DJ B Lord. Yup. DJ yep. B Lord, yeah. He's still <laughs> doing it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to rock with him heavy when I used to go out there because I used to go to the Mix Show Power Summits in the early 2000s. You remember the Mix Show Power yeah. Summits, right? Yeah, and Mix Show Power Summit. Renee and them put that on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yep, good yep. Time. Yeah, yeah, times yeah. make so possible, but they need to bring that back. Oh, if they, yo, if they brought that back now, it'd be crazy, man. You've been to be one. You've been to one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went to the okay. one that they had in uh, Puerto Rico. Oh, at the Paradiso. Yeah, Puerto so, Rico. So, yeah, so I, I, try to tell, I try to tell people back, I'm like, listen, those, like, the way they put it together the, with the artists and the DJs, that was brilliant, man. I had pictures yeah. with everybody, everybody. Yes. I was sitting having lunch with DJ Red Alert. You know what I'm saying? Some artists are being a little funny. Like, that's when I really started. I'm like, God, these are, some of these artists are booty. <laughs> yeah, you got to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of personalities, man. And a yeah. lot of ego. You know what mm, I'm saying? Yeah. Now, a lot of I heard you said that you had got out the game for a minute, man. What, what really made you want to get out the game? Well, I, like I said, man, I I got into the music publishing, but you know, um, so when I released, when I when I was ready to release the record I did with my aunt, me, I did a um record with um my aunt Donna Summer. It was called Angel, and um right when I was ready to put it out, I started hit up all the promoters and everybody. I was like, yo, let's do this, let's put this record out, and everyone was no one was hollering at me, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, he got a record with Donna Summer, but I'm like, yo, this is like history, like this, I'm the first rapper to ever do a fucking song with her, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't know. I don't know if dudes are jealous or like I don't know what it was. But she, they, she, so as soon as she passed away, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was hitting me up like, "Yo, Red, put the record out now. Give me the record." You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, what? I'm just like, yo, y'all want me to copy, capitalize off my aunt's death? I'm like, yo, I'm, yeah. I'm sick to my stomach. I mean, all the news people were trying to hit me up. PBS, they were hitting up people from I worked with 20 years ago. Like, yo, you know, ABC hit me up. They wanted to talk to you. I'm like, yo, I haven't talked to you in like 15 years, and you and you calling me because PBS called you. Like, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I was they like, don't oh, never. I'm like, oh. they don't never want to give the yeah. people they flowers while they're here. They wait. They wait till they go. You know what I'm saying? Which is so crazy, yeah. man. I, I don't understand that that part of the game either. Uh, that's the whole yeah, story. So yeah, so that that disgusted me. And then I had a couple of producers that I was working with that we had a couple of remixes with the song, mm -hmm. and they tried to put it out, and it wasn't even done. They just, I'm just like, wow. I'm like, people are really, I'm like, yo, this this fame they thing is crazy. Capitalize. Yeah, they want to capitalize. I got sick to my stomach, man. I was getting sick because I'm like, I can't believe people go this low, stoop this low, you know what I'm saying, to try to get 60 seconds of fame. You know what I'm saying? You'd be shocked. <laughs> yeah, so so I shelved I shelved that, um, you know, and then at the same time though, like my, two of my best homies passed away, and then um, you know, what I'm saying, and um, you know, I got I got in a little bit of trouble, you know, what I'm saying, because I, you know, I was I was stressed out, so you know, um, I just I just sat back, got behind the scenes, and just started doing the music publishing thing, because I didn't have to really be in the forefront and be out touring and going to clubs and all that stuff, and I just focused on the business side of it and just getting my business tightened up, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. What's your main DAW that you use when it comes to producing? I'm sorry, say it again? What's your main go-to DAW, D-A-W, when it comes to producing? What is that, though? What does that mean? I have no idea what that means. 
Dog, like, uh, your dog would be like Fruity Loops, Logic, oh, oh, Bass. Um, well, I have an MPC, uh, Motif, Ooh. and I run a MIDI. You got the new MP? No, 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 I got the old joint. I got the old oh. joint. Um, 2000? Yeah, I got the 2000. And then, um, um, I just run a MIDI and uh, I record everything on Pro Tools, and then I just do references on Mixcraft. Okay, Mixcraft. I ain't never heard of that. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Yeah, it's just like uh, I just use it for right because right, I don't write nothing on paper, so I just I just like record. I just like record and punch as I as I um as I uh, write new music. I like writing in my head. Okay, okay. What do you have out right now that all the consumers should be uh, going to check out? They gotta be checking out Duel for the Gram. And uh, the remix do it for the brand. Right now, we on radio, and uh, we starting to pick up some heat. Um, so yeah, definitely pick that up and listen to it, and you know what I'm saying, um, and bump it. All right, y'all. Y'all need to go ahead and bump that, pick it up. We got yep. two more questions, and then we're gonna let you skate up out of here, man. What is your favorite dish? What do you enjoy eating the most? <laughs> Dang, man, you got me on that. I got. <laughs> This is uh this is dish it's it's a it's a it's a Mexican dish but it's in a pineapple and they have chicken shrimp onions. Oh yeah, my cousin just got one. She went yeah. to some part of Georgia or well, I think she went to some part of Florida and she had got one of them and bought it back. And my cousin he was trying to eat his daughter's food. He said it's good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, it was bomb. I just can't remember the name of it, but. I'm a I'm a real I'm a, I'm a seafood guy, but I'm trying to chill out. I'm not on, I'm not trying to eat a lot a lot of seafood. I'm just I'm trying to treat it as a delicacy because what they doing to the ocean right now is kind of crazy. We got to be careful, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to minimize as much seafood as possible. But I like jerk jerk shrimp. I you know I I just love seafood. That's my those are my favorite seafood and I love hey, chicken. Bro, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a seafood lover too. But dang, what the heck they got going on in the ocean? I, they can't do that. Y'all got hey, stop it. Yeah, I mean, it, it just they're just pirating. They're just, they're just scraping everything off the ocean, man. Like, the, the, we need the ocean to survive. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, I feel like, I feel like anything, everything should be eaten to a certain um, uh, portion. Like, we don't need to be going all crazy and just pulling up everything out of the ocean. I feel like anything that is, um, like, should be considered, like, seafood or meat, that should be considered the delicacy. We should portion how much we eat. We shouldn't we shouldn't eat consume so much of it. Okay, okay. What is your favorite designer of choice if you had to choose? Uh, I like to stay I I don't really like to um push a lot of designers because I I I feel like we're like walking billboards for other people who don't give a fuck about it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, but I I do true, fuck with true. I like I like Gucci though. I ain't gonna front though. I fuck with Gucci. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I just hey, like the no, quality. No, I just like okay. the I just like the quality. You know what I'm saying. I just like the quality of Gucci. You know what I'm saying. So um, but that's kind of like. And there's a couple other new designers I've been checking out. Uh, I think his name Bungie or Bungie. He's a black uh, designer. I I've been rocking with his stuff. I'm gonna start copying some of his stuff because I want to support more black businesses. Yeah. All right, all right, man. Omega Red, man, we appreciate you taking the time to get on the mm -hmm. 2021 combo with us this evening. Thank you, thank you so much. We wish you mad success in all your endeavors. Appreciate before it. Before we let you go, I need you to throw out all your social media platforms to the audience so that they can go and follow you. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, um, Omega Red Super Fan, that's my, my handle. You can just go right up in my um, IG um, uh, profile, click on that link. And my website and all my social media platforms will be right there. So um, just go on my on my bio, hit me up. You want to holler at me? I'll get right back at you. All right. Dude, now I see somebody said something about a clothing brand. Did I miss? Yeah. That? I, no, I got I have a clothing brand it's called Stay Grounded Clothes. That's my man Maybach Mel. Um, I, like it's an incubation stage. Like I put it out during the pandemic just to test and see what people like. But I'm still developing and figure out what people actually like. So. Um, but I do have a clothing line. It's called Stay Grinding Clothing. Okay. How can they go about getting some Stay Grinding Clothing? You got the website for it? Yeah. All they, all they got to do is go on my website and hit the merch button. All right, y'all. Go ahead to the website. Hit the merch button. Support them. Get some of that clothing line. And uh, Maybach Mail, appreciate that. Because we can't let, <laughs> let them go. We ain't even talking that's, about nah, it. No, that, that, that's, that's, that's the, the homie, man. Right that, there. Maybach nah, Mail, nah, thank nah, you. Nah, nah, that's the homie. That's the homie. We grew up together. That's the homie. <laughs> okay. That's what's up, man. Omega Red, man. I'm going to be uh, DMing you my email. 
And uh, man, let's keep this relationship up and keep building, man. And uh, shit, hey, I'm gonna be coming to you for some advice. All right, let's do it, man. You need a drop or anything, just send me the script. I'll, I'll send it right back at you. Man, bet it up. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, brother. Peace. Peace. DJ Sly, D DJ Sly, hey, DJ Sly, D DJ Sly, hey, DJ. Sly.